Oh, this time because people they understood who Al Bashir is after 30 years and then so this time they're like no okay we're just gonna like all of us as Sudanese people we're just gonna go in front of in front of um, his palace to see until he ha until he has to step down so that's why people that were still standing there so until he, he fell and and now he fell for 30 years we've had different pockets of groups of um, different organizations for different purposes trying to fight their own battles trying to um, make their their voices heard and it's been falling on deaf ears I would say and uh, it's come to a point where the 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 people feel like their needs are not being met and so the Sudanese professional association have taken aboard the movement, have united everyone, and so now they have strength in numbers. The Sudanese uh, Professional Association group was formed by workers and professional people in their own fields, like nurses, doctors, teachers, engineers, laborers, who've come together to um, take a more organized, collective, stronger front for the revolution because it was not organized and it had been pockets of different um, groups fighting their own battles. I feel like because people have realized that if you're gonna attack back the same way the government have been pressing the people for 30 years, fighting them back the same way they have been hurting and, and killing our people isn't the way to retaliate. But in retaliation, we need to be calm and have like proper and a rational, rational response to everything because in anger, there's a lot of actions that can be taken that we can regret in the future times. But if we take this revolution in a way where it's calm, there's no killing, that way if they actually go back and kill people, it's not, they're not killing people because they have attacked. They're killing people because that's just what they've been doing. You know what I mean? Like throughout all of this, there's never been a someone who went out and actually shot at an army officer. If people just went out day by day and protest, there would be situations, for example, where they sent out like the the current government that is in, they sent out three trucks full of um, like officers, part of their um, team, who their aim coming there was to actually kill protesters. But with the proper like um, planning that they've got, they actually have a way of checking who's coming in and who's coming out and what day they go and what they speak about when they go in each day instead of just going out and speaking about anything. Two thirds of the protesters are women and young girls because they've been fighting for, since the Sharia law had been put in place, they've been fighting for their own rights and they've been targeted by uh, Bashir's government and they have been fighting for a very long time to um, get their voices heard. And other allies include the Nuba um, uh, groups and also the Ford, who've also been targeted by Bashir's government during their genocides and ethnic cleansing. There's a, one girl called Allah, so she went onto a car and actually was chanting on top of the car. And she's one of the ones who's currently popular with um, this revolution that's been going on. Before her, there's been women as well who've been arrested, who've been detained, who've been killed, who've been kidnapped and they've also tried to speak out. So this revolution, I feel as though it's given women more of a voice. They feel like they want to speak out. They don't want to be kept quiet anymore. Um, and also, it's, it's also allowed the younger generation to see their potential because our mothers and our grandmothers, they, they allowed the government, unfortunately. They, they put them underneath a pedestal and, and a, like a certain level of where they could speak and what they could say mm. but now it's changed. People have been suffering for like 30 years and they realize that it's much better to um, come together as a united front instead of fighting their own separate battles because at the end of the day they are fighting the same monster like the same common enemy and um, there is strength in unity at the end of the day so they just decided to come together because people are just fed up at this point in time and they really just want the best for Sudan. The protest movement is what pushed people to think like that because previously it was there. No one would, if someone was Darfurian, you wouldn't think, okay, I'm Darfurian too. If, if they stand for something, I'm going to support them. There was way too much tribalism for, for that to, to, for people to move forward from that. And the government knew that people had that instilled in them. So they used that as a, as a way to, to manipulate everyone and to f have them towards, like to support the government and to turn away from the Darfurian people and other ethnic groups. 
So with this chant, I feel like it's only now that people have realized that, say for example, when people are shot in the street, you're not worried about where this person is from and what religion they are or what color they are. You're more focused that we're all here, we have the same drive, we want the same thing. And in order for us to get that, we need to put aside everything. And the government have been using tribalism to manipulate us for way too long, and they need to let go of that. As soon as Bashir um, stepped down from the office, he brought the Abu Wolf to come in to take the office. And then the Sudanese people are like, no, we don't want him. We don't want him. So that's why he fell so quickly, because they knew he was from the same party. The Bashir government, they're still, they're still in, inside the office, so, but um, they don't want people to know. But already, also these people already they know the um, Al-Bashir um, government is still there. They're all the same. They follow him, they're loyal to him, so what difference is it going to make if we put just, you know, someone else? So pretty much they, yeah, they're not backing down without a fight until they are 110% guaranteed that, you know, Sudan is a stable place and a country where, you know, we have absolute freedom. The general um, Al-Burhan, he has, um, him and his forces have already insisted that they will take power and take control for uh, one year to stabilise the government, which is unacceptable by the Sudanese government because you cannot, you cannot um, clean up 30 years of bloodshed and corruption in a year. So the Sudanese uh, government, uh, people have proposed for a, a, a government that includes the SPA, the uh, Sudanese Professional Association, where they have professional people for the job, no political agendas, um, people who represent them and have their best, best interest at heart to um, come in uh, and have seats at the table in, and be heard in the transitional government and taking uh, take their place, their rightful place to help stabilise the government. At this point, no one really knows when the next elections will be, I guess. Um, people are just, you know, going out there every day, fighting, protesting, putting their words out there, making sure that their message has gone across because at the end of the day, we don't know when Sudan is going to be stable and we can't say that it's a safe place because every day you wake up to new news and um, pretty much surprises every day, you never know. Like. So the SBA have asked for, instead of the, um, the military taking its place as the governing body, they want them to protect them while they continue to protest and continue to demand that their um, needs are met and that Bashir is held accountable because he needs to answer for his war crimes and his bloodshed and his corruption.